Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Victoria Physics. In this video, I'm going to discuss about Huygens principle and the geometrical construction of the propagation of wavefronts. So let us begin our discussion on wavefront and rays. Well, it is a common experience uh, that when we drop a small stone or a pebble in a calm pool, the expanding circles of alternate crests and trough are seen to move out of the point of impact. All the particles lying on the crest are in the same position of their maximum upward displacement and hence they are in the same phase. Similarly, all the particles that lies on the trough are in a position of maximum downward displacement and they are also in the same phase. Hence, the locus of all such adjacent points oscillating in the same phase at a particular instant of time is called the wavefront. So the circles formed by the wave press as well as the circles formed by the wave troughs between them are wavefronts. Similarly, when sound waves or light waves from a point like source spreads out in still air, any spherical surface that is concentric with the source is also a wavefront. One important point that you should keep in mind while studying about wavefront is that wavefront always moves in the forward direction. And to describe the direction of propagation of the light, it is convenient for us to represent the light waves by rays rather than by wavefronts. A ray is an imaginary line along the direction of propagation of the wave. And they are straight lines perpendicular to the wavefronts. I hope this is quite clear to you. So just summing up to our points that I discussed just now, that wavefront is defined as the locus of all points having the same phase at a given instant of time. And the shape of the wavefront depends on the shape of the source of disturbance. Then wavefronts always moves in the forward direction and that a wavefront is always normal to the light rays. Our next topic of discussion is the types of wavefront. Just now I said that the geometrical shape of the wavefront depends on the source of disturbance. So there are three basic types of wavefronts. We have spherical wavefront. The wavefronts are spherical in shape if the light source is a point source, as you can see in this particular figure, it's a point source or even a spherical source. And by point, source, I mean to say that the source is small, so small that it is considered as a point. Uh, rather, I can say it's dimensionless. So all the points on the wavefront are equidistant from this source and are in the same phase. Just in our previous slide, I gave you an example of ripples in water. Those are in form of uh, uh, concentric circles, which are actually the uh, spherical wavefronts. Our next uh, type of wavefront is the plane wavefront. Over here, you have to understand one thing that as the spherical wavefront advances, its curvature decreases progressively. And at large distance from the source, a small portion of such a wavefront will be a plane wavefront. Theoretically, the plane wavefronts are obtained from a source kept at infinity. And the rays coming 
out of the source are parallel. And hence we have planar wave fronts. That's the rays coming out of a convex lens with the source kept at its focus have a plane wave front. Finally, we have the cylindrical wave fronts. The wave fronts are cylindrical in shape if the light source is a fine line slit. This is because all the points on the wave front are equidistant from the line slit or the linear source. And the cylindrical wave front will also be observed if the source is a thin symmetric cylinder with a large ratio of length to its radius. Fine. Now we will discuss Hygen's principle. Well, this part is being already uh, described in another video. But just to recapitulate a bit, Christian Huygens proposed this theory and explained how light is propagated by geometric construction of wavefront. And according to his principle, uh, all the points on a wavefront uh, serve as a point source of spherical secondary wavelets. These secondary wavelets spread out in all directions with the speed of light in a given medium. At a later time, say T, the new position of the wavefront will be that of a surface tangent to these secondary wavelets in the forward direction. That is the forward envelope. So, to understand it in a bit detail, let us consider a spherical or a plane wavefront moving towards right and let this be its position at any instant of time, say t. According to Huygens' principle, each point on this wavefront becomes a source of secondary wavelets or disturbances, which travels with the speed of light. Thus, secondary wavelets will produce spherical surface of radius c into delta t in a later time, say delta t, at each point of the wavefront that is produced. The tangential surface are drawn on these spherical secondary wavelets. The forward envelope or the tangential surface of these secondary wavelets will be the new wavefront after the time delta t. So it is clear that the wavefront will be spherical for a spherical wavefront AB. And it will be planar wavefront, say for a planar wavefront AB. Okay, just for instance, I'm saying these arrow lines perpendicular to both the wavefronts are rays shown the direction of propagation of the wave and energy flow. So it is to be noted that there is no backward flow of energy during the propagation of a wave. Due to this reason, we consider only the forward envelope or the tangential surface. I hope it's quite clear now. Well, our last topic of discussion for today's video is diffraction and its effect uh, on aperture. So just let us understand this part. When waves pass through an aperture, this is an aperture, okay? So when waves pass through an aperture which has opening of dimensions of the order of its wavelength or the shape age of an obstacle, they spread out into the region which is not directly exposed to oncoming waves. This phenomena is called diffraction. And diffraction occurs for waves of all types, not just for light waves. The diffraction of water waves can be observed when they travel uh, across the surface of water in a shallow tank. For a given wavelength, the diffraction is more pronounced 
the smaller the slit width or the aperture opening. This bending of light at sharp edges or narrow aperture is inconsistent with the spreading of wavelengths in Huygens' construction. And according to Huygens' principle, each point on the wavefront may be regarded as the new source of waves called the secondary waves. Thus, for a plane wave approaching the barrier, say, AB, from the left side, the waves are either reflected back or absorbed at all points except the opening S. The waves at S produce disturbances behind the screen and spread out from S in the form of semicircles. We will discuss about diffraction and its phenomena in our later videos. So I hope today's class was quite clear to you. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then give it a like and subscribe to Victoria Physics for more learning materials and videos. Stay at home and stay safe. Thank you.